Welcome back to an RPG Architect tutorial. Today's video is a Patreon request from Ken Fried, who wants to see more about scripting in the engine. So today's video is going to be about what scripts are, as well as where to use them. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the 2D sample project that comes with the engine. And the first thing is to understand what a script is in RPGA. Now, scripts are the logic that are going to be on the entities and the database. And what I mean by that is, is if you have the entity icon selected, you can click into an entity. This was one that already exists. And you can see that there are these scripts over here on the right. So this was important to go over because when I first heard script, I was thinking TypeScript, which is what I'm used to in Game Maker and Pixel Game Maker and even RPG Maker, where you script your typing code. But in this case, the script is actually the actions that you can use that are already available in the engine. So some other thing to take notice is that the entity has script names and scripts right here as well. And these are actually more like event pages in RPG Maker. And so what you do is you create a script and then you can name that script. So this would be script, we'll just call it say page just for an easy example two. And so this would be script page two and this one's script page one. Now it is important to know that the order is opposite of RPG Maker where scripts at the top or script pages, I should say at the top are going to have priority over the ones in the bottom if they're both true. And by true, I mean that the condition is met. So these are where the conditions go to make that page active or to make this page active. But if this one has a condition that is not met yet, then page two will be the one that runs. However, if they're both true, page one will be the one that runs. All right, so again, over on this right side, if you highlight this blank area and right click, you'll get all the scripts available in the editor. And so for instance, we can go to a data manipulation, go to change switch. Now there are a couple options here. You can change a global switch, a local switch. Now a global switch is going to be a switch that you set in this area, which these are the switches right here. You're gonna set your switches right in here. These are global, these are your global variables. If we go back in here, you'll see that we have a local data set right here. And these are gonna be the private variables and the private switches for this entity only. So you cannot use these local datas outside of this entity. And so there is some other options here. We can go to a global range. This is kind of cool where you can actually select and say, let's go from switch three until switch nine. And let's set them all true. So this is a way to sort of array your switches so you can have a bulk group of switches that you can turn on or off. And also if we add a variable one, you'll see that it's very much the same. You'll have global, local ranges and all this other stuff. And this is basically how you will set all your logic through the game. If you have a skill or an attribute, you're gonna keep track of it probably through a variable. If you have an item that you pick up or a quest that you wanna activate, you will probably use a switch. Now, a couple more things I'll show here is you have a maximize all and a minimize all option up here. It would be cool if we had a minimal amount so we can just kind of see just a one line for each one. I'm not sure if that's planned for early access or not. But anyway, this is where you're going to script and this is how you use scripts. So whenever someone in the discord is saying you can script this or I know the dev says that a lot, that is what he is referring to is that this is you're going to be able to event it basically. All right, so moving along, we can right click this area, go to system, and we can see that we have an option to run a global script. Now this global script is more like a common event that you would see in like an RPG maker. You can see that there's already a few selected, but you would select one from here. All right, so let's see where you set up these global scripts. If I hit okay and hit F8 for the database, we can scroll all the way down and see global script options. We can click on it, we can see the ones that it was giving us options for. For instance, a shop, we could rename it if we want, but you can see this is where you're going to set up the script. So we could add more to this script, play an audio sound effect, stuff like this. And this is gonna be a function basically that is ran and it can be for any entity or any of the database areas that you can use scripts as well. So this is like, again, setting up a little function and then your entity can call it or any entity can call it and it will use the same logic. It's really nice for a lot of situations. It's very, and it's very much like common events are in maker engines. All right, so now let's see where else we can use scripts inside the database. So first, if we scroll up here, we can see skills. If we click on skills, we can so just select one. And if we scroll down, you can see that we can use a global script for this skill. So this will be one place to use them is for your skills. 
and other places for items. If you click on items, you can scroll down and see global scripts. So for skills and items, which is super important to have some custom ability, you can see that we can do this with scripts. All right, so the last place that you can use scripts in is the user interfaces. So if you go to a list, you can scroll down and click on these buttons right here. Let me expand this out. And you can see on the button options, you have an execute, an item focused, and an item unfocused command. You also have it down here as well, a focused and an unfocused. When you click on these, you're going to be able to add scripts over here on the right. So an item focused, you can do this script. And what this, the, a list is, and there'll be videos for this, is it's going to be like a selection, basically, of options. And so when this option is selected, which is new game, it's going to focus this stuff from a script. If you have it unfocused, then it's going to do this. And then if you execute, which means that you select OK, then what is it going to do? Well, a new game is going to start the new game, which is found in the scene start new game. You could see that you could easily have an exit option and then you would select scene exit. All right. So these are the main places where I found to use scripts. There may be more, but these were some of the, the big ones. So hopefully this video was helpful. Like, subscribe if you want to see more RPG Architect content. Any questions, comments below, Steam Forums, Discord, we'll get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.